Does your pond have too many small bluegill or all your bass 12 inches long and skinny? Are you hoping to restock your pond to fix these issues? Stick around as we discuss why restocking may or may not be the best option for you. Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith, Fish Management Specialist here at Aquatic Control. And one of the most common requests that I get from new customers is restocking their pond. This often comes from individuals who just bought a property with a pond or someone wanting to revitalize their pond that has been neglected in recent years. In both scenarios, the customer often does not have a good idea of what they have going on in the pond. So, this leaves us at risk of stocking fish that are unneeded and could actually compound a current issue instead of fixing the one that you set out to fix. Before getting into our stocking recommendations on how to fix too many bluegill or too many stunted bass, let's quickly talk about competition. Competition is something we see occurring in almost all the ponds that we survey every year. The biggest difference is just what level of competition and what species are experiencing the most competition. So if there are too many individuals of a in a population, the competition can be very high. So your pond has a limited number of resources available and those resources have to be spread across all the fish in your pond. Now let's talk through a couple examples. Let's say your bluegill population is extremely abundant, competition is very high, and so your growth is very slow. The biggest bluegill in your pond may be six and a half inches, five and a half inches. The last thing we wanna do in that scenario is stock more bluegill if that's the population that we're trying to improve. Another example would be your largemouth. If all of your largemouth are 12 inches long, high in abundance, look really skinny, we can assume that the competition is really high. So the worst thing we can do in this scenario is stock more largemouth bass. That would only add to the competition, right? So if you don't know what your current fish population looks like, you could very easily add more individuals into an already stunted or overabundant population. So how do you know what to stock? Well, like I said, you have to have some idea of what's going on in your pond. The best thing you can do is just go fish or have others come fish your pond and get a good idea of what you're catching. What size are your bluegill? What size are your bass? Do you catch different sizes? Or are they all the same size? Are your fish looking skinny or do they all look really healthy? These are all questions you should ask yourself and stuff I would probably ask you if you called here you know, to ask our advice. I've admittedly lost business to other hatcheries because I try to ask these questions instead of just blindly coming up with a stocking plan. So, Personally, I would hate to sell you fish that are going to be a detriment to your pond. If that means stocking's not needed, then that's fine. There's several other aspects to pond management that we'll probably touch on today that you should consider as well. Another great option if you are really serious about managing your pond is having a pond and lake management professional out to do an electrofishing survey. This is going to allow us to get a really good idea of what is going on in your pond we can then come up with a specific stocking plan for your specific pond if it's needed. It also allows us to point out and address other potential issues that may or may not be a higher priority than stocking. If you're interested in fish surveys, we did an overview video highlighting the different surveys we offer, and we can add a link to the video in the description, or you can check out our channel. Before I get into our stocking recommendations, if you've managed to hang around until this portion of the video, be sure to like the video and subscribe. This helps us know what types of videos you guys like. We've had videos on topics like fish structure, initial fish stockings, and even just feeding your fish. Lastly, be sure to leave a comment if there's another topic you'd like us to address. So let's assume you've had a survey done or you've been fishing with your buddies and you have an idea of what scenario your fishery is in right now. As promised, we're gonna cover a couple common scenarios and what stocking could be helpful. So first, we'll talk about bluegill crowded. So you got a lot of bluegill, your biggest bluegill could be five and a half, six and a half, six and a half inches. In that scenario, we're gonna recommend generally stocking 20 to 40 predators per surface acre. 
Now that can be largemouth bass, hybrid striped bass, walleye, uh, depends on your area and what you have going on. But this scenario provides an opportunity to introduce some of these other fun predators if your you know, hatcheries in your area have them. But a common mistake that I see a lot is introducing these other predators like a hybrid striped bass or a walleye into a bass crowded pond because you already have too many predators out there and then you try to introduce these other predators and they're, not, they're just not gonna grow the way that you're hoping to. But if you're in a bluegill crowded scenario, that's when these other predators can actually help you and be a lot of fun. The other common scenario we see is bass crowded, like we've been talking about. So in that situation, all your bass are gonna be at eight inches or 10 inches or 12 inches, it doesn't matter. They're all gonna be in a very narrow size range. And so in that scenario, we're gonna recommend stocking 500 to 1500 three to five inch bluegill 300 to 500, three to four inch red ear, and 10 to 20 pounds of golden shiners per surface acre. Now that's gonna sound like a lot of fish, but you have to keep in mind, in a bass crowded scenario, you're gonna stock some of these fish and they're gonna get eaten right away. So you have to overcome that, and that's where other aspects are really important in this scenario, such as harvest and habitat. The stocking will accomplish very little long-term if your harvest and your habitat are not addressed as well. So just to reiterate, the reason we wanted to do this video today is because we get a lot of calls about people wanting to generally restock their pond. But something you have to keep in mind is every pond is different. So the best way to restock your pond is to be just generally knowledgeable about what you have, where you're trying to go with your pond, and then we can create a custom stocking plan that is best for you. So if you have other questions about improving your fishery, feel free to reach out to us over the phone or through our website and we'd be happy to help.